uh, where the offers are headed in time to inspire people that have huge gaps that the deal will probably get done. Keep playing. This is a game you can win uh, during the middle muddle when we've got a huge gap. And can we do something about concessions plans that are a little more elegant than uh, 50,000 every 20 minutes until I get back from the gym? And it turned out after we put a whole bunch of these in the database, and you guys know that there's uh, two ways at least to do software. One is rule-based, like TurboTax, where you say if then, and it would work great for a midpoint analysis. But the other way is to have the, have the neural nets and algorithms go and find people who have behavioral patterns, people that have behaved like the folks in your round, to find and then adjust to the current case a model of somebody acting like the folks in this round. And so the question always is, well, Don, do you have so-and-so in your database? It's like, well, I don't know, it's anonymous data, but uh, chances are we've got somebody who's acted like so-and-so, and the algorithms will adjust it to the case. It turns out uh, two, two things. One was a byproduct. First one was, uh, can we probabilistically project this uh, like they do uh, storm graphs? to see where something's likely to land long before it gets there uh, to have a number of byproducts. One of which is they stay in the game. Uh, two is uh, they moderate their behavior and they get more pricing information because they're not waiting for the late round 330 numbers because they know where it's going more uh, accurately during the day. And then the second question was, well, gee, if we're going to try to uh, be intelligent about this and play battleship with sonar, can we reverse engineer, knowing what we know about in-group behavior by jurisdiction, by claim type, to uh, reverse engineer how we get to the number that we want to get to in a way that takes advantage of what we know about neuroscience and mirror neurons to um, take some of the noise out that's likely to um, increase impasse? And the question to both ended up being yes. So the first is probabilistic projection that uh, looks like a couple of hurricane graphs overlapping. You can see at the top, and we'll do one live in a minute, that there's a huge gap between the parties. This is the initial take, but the projections uh, make it look like there is momentum to a deal and take advantage of other cognitive errors to get folks thinking that this is a deal that can be done rather than paying attention to the in-round noise in that round. Uh, the other is, how do we back up and get to, if I want to get to X, how do I uh, get there? No surprise, uh, plaintiffs are going to start more aggressively. It's not, um, and this will change. This graph will change based on uh, jurisdiction and claim type because of the in-group behavior. But uh, it's not symmetrical. Defendants, obviously, everybody's going to move more at the beginning to get off of aggressive anchoring uh, and sort of set the hook, to get off of those anchors uh, more aggressively and then tighten up into the conventional V at the bottom. But how do we get there? So the defendant's line's a little more uh, straight, a little bit of a curve at the top to make the concessions. Plaintiffs, uh, this one, I don't remember, it looks like a PI case in Boston. A little more linear, uh, very strong um, anchoring, uh, asking 94 million on what ended up to be, uh, oh, this is the civil action thing, um, based on those 28 million or something like that. Anyway, um, so then actionable intelligence to end round, rather than playing Candy Crush and Angry Birds, to end round, end round, see where you're going, and move the dots around to fine tune your position uh, before you get there and to improve it. So rather than the video, I've got two outstanding uh, litigators, neutrals, uh, all, all great Americans that will help me uh, negotiate a case. Deborah Rothman, you know, from Los Angeles, fantastic. Uh, neutral, mediator, arbitrator, recently president of the commercial arbitrators. Uh, John DeGroat from Dallas was, um, ran a company. He was GC, ran Bearing Point, and is now a great neutral. They're feisty. Uh, needed somebody to keep us awake this uh, time of day. So they're going to play plaintiffs and defendants uh, in this simple contract matter in L.A. court. So your, your in-group is Los Angeles and... Um, contract case. So what we're going to do real offers. These are, this is a real case. It's not one of mine. Uh, real offers and let them ham it up a little bit to keep you awake. Um, but they're going to do, tell me the real number in dollars and the time of day 
so that we can get uh, real projections on where this thing might have ended up. Okay, good. California, Los Angeles, I got my in groups. I'm in state court, LA, contract. And obviously the expectations on both sides would be different. If Deborah and John are playing this, they're not gonna pick the same number. They don't need me. Uh, they would have done this four years ago uh, by themselves. Um, so I'm gonna pick, since I know where it ends up, I'm gonna pick 1.8 million. But know that both people would be playing different numbers, uh, but it would still um, help with the behavior of both. So what does Simon say that to get to LA, and get to 1.8 million, and you can imagine that very, people in industry, both plaintiff's lawyers, uh, pe people in the risk business, are all very interested in how do I get to the number that uh, some, some other software has determined that I need to get to in a way that keeps from blowing the round. Insurance adjust, uh, execs will tell you that um, all these frantic calls uh, to Chicago, Hartford, New York, London late in the day are not because they suddenly got smarter about the case. It's because they held back authority from their uh, local uh, rep that's in the mediation. And they didn't want them to spend it all. And they say, well, how can I uh, space it out in a way that I know they're not gonna spend it too early uh, when we know that the real deal is gonna get cut on the eve of uh, when negotiation ends. Every, every negotiation goes to fit the space available or people think they got gypped, right? That's the reason they go down to the end. It's the reason we have budget problems in Washington on the day before and all that good stuff. Anybody that makes a deal too early thinks they got rooked. So oh, 1.8 million, there's the deal. Deborah, you wanna ham it up for a minute and then make an offer to John? or a demand? At 10.30 in the morning, you're making close to the bone demands. 10.35, all right. And how many of you guys get those? Everybody will tell you, let's cut to the chase, right? But they've got a different definition of the chase. All right, John. Well, there we go. Any, any of you mediators hear this kind of stuff in uh, mediation? I've actually got a list somewhere you can take the survey of your responses to the 28 things mediators always hear. Um, and it's what time, John? 11 o'clock. Notice uh, as we get into this, it will, not, it will adjust the, how you make the concession strategy based on the times. And after a couple of rounds, it'll uh, get, get really...